Our hearts are broken, but our spirit is not. This is a time for the House to lock arms. That is House Speaker John Boehner today and a solemn moment for the House of Representatives as they remember and try to rally around their fallen colleague, Gabrielle Giffords. Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Jonathan Carl. Every day at noon Eastern, right here bringing you the latest in politics at Twitter.com slash Rick Klein, Twitter.com slash John Carl John. A lot going on today in Tucson, in Washington and beyond. What's caught our, your eye today? Uh, well, our, our eye has been caught up in Alaska, actually, Rick. Blood libel. Those are Sarah Palin's words as she weighs in on this debate over the rhetoric, the heated rhetoric about the heated rhetoric. It's not clear that Sarah Palin did herself much good weighing in now, but here is a bit of what she had to say in a video release. Especially within hours of a tragedy unfolding, journalists and pundits should not manufacture a blood libel that serves only to incite the very hatred and violence that they purport to condemn. That is reprehensible. Rick, a couple things extraordinary about this video release. First of all, it was just the nature of it, almost like a presidential address uh, released from, uh, uh, fr from Alaska. But the other thing is, is she goes on for several minutes talking about the situation in Arizona, uh, but a very small part of it relatively is about the victims. Most of it is essentially defending herself uh, and other, con other uh, conservatives like Rush Limbaugh who have been accused of, of creating the environment that led to this tragedy. That's right, and she's taken a lot of heat from the, the particularly uh, uh, bloggers on the political left. And the particular use, though, of this term blood libel has raised a lot of eyebrows. Mm. It has a meaning that she may not have been aware of that has anti-Semitic uh, overtones as well. Next up today, locking arms. Congress is back, and they're getting briefings today on new security arrangements for members of Congress. And, and also, John, you're up there, and, and it just seems like there is a, a, the, the, a sense of the, the vitriol that has colored our politics for so long has kind of been sapped away from Congress. There's a lot of yelling that's going on outside about our politics, but, but right now in the Capitol, it's a different place. Uh, that's exactly right, particularly over in the House where this really hit home uh, for Democrats and Republicans. So while you've had this often vitriolic debate, uh, debate about the vitriolic debate, uh, you really have had none of it so far on the floor of the House here in Congress. Uh, but my next one, Rick, uh, Bernie's Bucks, uh, this is over on the Senate side, a pretty extraordinary email, a uh, fundraising email that was sent out by Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, the independent caucuses with Democrats from from Vermont. Right at the top, this is a this is a fundraising email. He's asking people to contribute, but he's talking about the situation in Arizona. And Rick, almost more amazing than that, uh, a fundraiser so closely tied to this, is he is really placing it right at the hands. He, he is convicting what con, uh, committing what I guess Sarah Palin would call blood libel. Listen to a little bit of this, Rick. Um, he says, uh, given the threats and acts of violence uh, that are part of the political climate in Arizona, quote, nobody can honestly express surprise that such a tragedy finally occurred. He takes on Sarah Palin, he takes on Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh, and he says in light of all the violence, both actual and threatened, is Arizona a state in which people who are not Republicans are able to participate freely and fully in the democratic process? Uh, really an amazing uh, a letter from Bernie Sanders. Amazing is a good way to put it, and a lot of Democrats distancing themselves from any kind of efforts like that, particularly the fact that it is part of a fundraising appeal. And finally today, it's the Kennedy Shuffle. News today in the Boston Globe, Scott Lehigh, great columnist up there, reports that Vicki Kennedy has taken her name out of the running for Senate in 2012. But maybe just as significant, we may see the emergence of the heir apparent to the Kennedy dynasty, Joseph P. Kennedy III, that's the grandson of RFK gave a speech yesterday on the floor of the Massachusetts State House to commemorate his great uncle's 50th anniversary of his inauguration. And, and it was strikingly political and striking in the fact that he talked about the Giffords controversy. This young man is only 30 years old and has a very bright political future in Massachusetts and beyond, John. He sure does. There had been a lot of speculation, Rick, that he would run uh, for, for, for the seat in, in Cape Cod. 
which which came open. Uh, he did not run for that seat, but he uh, nobody expected him to come out and do this. I even spoke to members of the Kennedy family who didn't know he was going to be doing this. Uh, but by all accounts, a thoughtful speech, a political speech, but not in the way that we've seen from from either side. I mean, he he, he really uh, uh, it, it, it was a, a very interesting speech talking about uh, the need uh, effectively to to cool the rhetoric on all sides, but not going and making the next step, which is tying what happened in Arizona uh, to this. He he spoke about uh, similar you know uh, rhetoric that was used against uh, against Dick Cheney and George Bush. A very even-handed speech. Right. So interesting. Right. Well, we begin today's program up on Capitol Hill. John Carl, a few minutes ago, we spent some time with uh, Congressman Ted Poe, a Republican of Texas, who's actually a good friend of Gabby Giffords. Take a look. All right, we're joined now by Congressman Ted Poe of Texas. Congressman, thanks a lot for joining us. Glad to be here. Now, you were, just a few minutes ago, you were on the floor of the House listening to Speaker Boehner give a very emotional speech about uh, the events in Arizona. And you, you had a quite close relationship uh, with uh, Gabrielle, still do, with Gabrielle Giffords. Uh, what was your feeling in that chamber? Well, it was somber. Uh, it, it wasn't an emotional atmosphere as the Speaker uh, talked about the events in Tucson. Uh, everyone is attentive, and uh, he is the first in a line of uh, many speakers to show tribute and condolences to uh, the people of Tucson, Arizona. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but, but you, you're a Republican, you're a conservative Republican, uh, but Gabby Giffords was somebody that you, you spent a lot of time with. Yes, uh, Gabby and I are personal friends first, and then uh, colleagues. Uh, I've traveled to Iraq with her last year. Uh, we've worked on legislation, border legislation together. In fact, Friday before we both left, uh, we were talking on the House floor about uh, going to Tucson. She invited me to Arizona to go to the border. I'd invited her to, to Texas to come see our border. And so we are close friends. And, and uh, how was that conversation? Well, it was always cordial. You know, Gabby is even even tempered, cordial, and um, we had discussed this and other uh, other issues. Uh, we worked very well together. Uh, she's one of those that works well with both sides, uh, members of her party and the Republicans as well. I want to ask you, I don't know if you saw this, but Senator Bernie Sanders uh, put out a, a fundraising letter yesterday uh, where he was very harshly critical of, of, of the uh, environment of hate that he says is out there in the, the political dialogue and then closed it by asking for money, uh, talking, you know, about this, about this tragedy in Arizona. What, what do you make of something like that, somebody going out and raising money off this, uh, off this tragedy? Well, I, I don't think anyone should use this uh, as an opportunity to promote some political agenda. We have to remember two things, that uh, Gabby Giffords and the others are victims of crime, and the person responsible uh, is the shooter. And he and he alone should be held accountable. He should have a quick, swift, and speedy trial. And his punishment should be severe if he's found guilty. And anyone that tries to diminish that, I think, uh, is probably uh, not using wisdom. Is, is there a larger uh, message to this moment, though? I mean, we hear a lot of talk about toning down the political rhetoric, not, not just from those that are trying to make a connection. Uh, but but we hear about you know Speaker Boehner talked about the House responding locked arm in arm, which is not the way we've seen this place over over the last several years. Members of Congress uh, uh, should continue to be vigorous in their positions, but we have a responsibility to lead and set the tone for civility, and continue to uh, talk about issues and not people. Talk about policy and not personalities and personal attacks on each other. Uh, we have that responsibility to lead here in Congress to do that. Okay, so let me ask you because it sir, got a lot of attention immediately. Sarah Palin has put out a, a video message on this and uh, she spent a lot of it very harshly critical of those uh, that, have, uh, th that have raised this issue of political civility and she called it a blood libel to check their, to, to suggest there was any connection between you know some, some harsh political rhetoric and what happened and of course we know there, there's no evidence for any kind of a connection but 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 what do you make of Sarah Palin coming out so strongly and raising and you specifically using the phrase blood libel in connection with uh, with this uh, discussion well the my opinion is that the discussion should the discussion should be about what happened and the person who committed the crime. We should uh, uh, not be deterred and uh, uh, you know, make an assault on the Constitution and the First uh, Amendment, particularly because of uh, this event. This is not an excuse to uh, change or try to amend uh, or attack uh, uh, the Constitution. So uh, it, it's not the speech, it's not what's taking place, it's not uh, the positions people take. It is the act 
actor that should be held totally accountable for his crime. What, what do you expect out of the president uh, tonight? Well, I, th I think the president will do a, a good job of uh, talking about the victims of this crime and uh, showing uh, uh, our condolences as a nation how we uh, support them. Uh, this uh, attack was really an attack on, on uh, the policy or the philosophy of our country to peaceably assemble and to hear some public official make comments along with other uh, individuals that were there. Uh, that's what the attack was, uh, was on and it's specifically against Gabby Giffords, federal judge and, and five other individuals. One, one thing is you are already hearing people raise the issue of gun control, and I, I know fully well where, where you stand on that issue generally, but, but is there some common ground potential on the issue of, of, of trying to make sure that there is a way that those that are mentally ill, those that clearly have a problematic background, uh, like, like this alleged shooter, uh, shooter um, I, I, is there a way to, to try to take steps to ensure that somebody like that can't go in buy guns, buy ammunition, and go out and do what he just did. We have to certainly find out how he was able to obtain uh, the weapon that he bought and uh, his mental background and whether those things were checked or not before he was able to purchase uh, the weapon. But it was not the weapon that we hold accountable. Under our system, we hold the shooter accountable for his conduct. And I think uh, very strongly that that's where our focus should be. But he couldn't have done that damage without that weapon, though, right? I mean, if Well, we don't know if he would have done the damage some other way. It, apparently, he had uh, planned for some time uh, to be the assassin. Uh, he made those comments in writing, apparently, that uh, we now understand have been discovered. So, uh, so what the means he used, we don't know what other means he would have used. But the answer is to punish him and hold him accountable, not to do violence against the Constitution. All right, Congressman Ted Poe from Texas, I really appreciate it. Always good to talk to you, sir. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Tom.